Well, it's the fall of the year and the first cold front is approaching Florida and it's pushing pretty far south. So I'm really thinking about, you know, just trying to come up with something a little different, a little different look. Well, I had plans to fish North Florida this week and watching that front as, you know, as we always do, we tend to see things start to speed up a little quicker than what maybe they initially predicted. So I had to really think outside the box and go into uh, plan B. And I remember Nestor sending me these pictures of these mutton snapper, and I'm like, this could be absolutely perfect. It's South Florida, maybe, just maybe, I can race that front and get there, get it filmed, and get back home before we catch the nasty. So Jay, first thing, we're gonna, we're gonna pull up, catch some live bait, fill the wells up with, with some candy. Yeah. And then from there, we'll just start fishing some channels, some patch reefs, and just live chumming, get them popping, hopefully, and you know, game on from there. You know, the one thing you were saying is the variety of that on these patch reefs is incredible. Yeah. Uh, which I'm all about, man. If we can get a, a little bit of bite, and maybe some of those mutton snapper you've been showing, whoop! Let's go bend that rod, man. Yeah, man, let's make it happen. You know, once we get started and we get out on the water, you know, I look to, you know, I look over to my left side and I see nothing but pristine waters, wide open, expansive grounds to fish. And I look back to my right and it's the giant city of Miami. So yeah, having those two right next to each other and to know what Miami has to offer as, uh, as far as a fishery is incredible to me to be able to see those two right next to each other. So I see our hole here, current's ripping past it. So this zone right here is gonna be where we're gonna be put, deploying some baits and- Pretty much, Jay. Get them busted on the surface, you hope? Yep, yep. All right, let's, let's see if we can- Let's get some guys out there. Let's see if we can get a couple uh, partakers. We get it set up on our first spot and the current's moving pretty good. So Nestor suggested we use some light jig heads. Um, we nose hooked the pilchards, uh, threw them into the current, let them free drift back. And I gotta tell you, it was a little getting used to feeling that bite and that heavier current. It's fish on. Small mine. No, all right. Yep. First one of the day. Man, the the color on these things are out of control. Gorgeous on this when they get that olive green in that grass, man. I mean, look how bright that tail is. I love the fact that we're in like seven feet of water and catching buttons like that, you know. When casting out this pilcher on the jig head, you know the jig head is really just to help get that pilcher down a little bit in the current, uh, and it's super important to just feed out the line ever so slightly. Uh, and all you're really feeling for is a small little tick on the line. Uh, and that is the bite. You know, they're, they're grabbing it and jumping right back out of the current, uh, kind of tucked up along those grasses. And, um, you know, it's, an, it's a very unique style fishery. Uh, and clearly it's something that, is, that can definitely produce. Oh! <laughs> what do you got? <laughs> I think that might be him, Jay. It all worked out great. That bird grabbed the bait. Yeah. He took it out next to 100 yards. <laughs> took it, is that what it is? I mean, don't mind me. I'm still going to throw this out. It looks like you're going to be in a little while. Oh, my I don't net a whole lot of fish, but they keep getting bigger. Yeah, that's, a, that's an upgrade. Look at that. I mean, I know, I, I know you're catching bigger, and they keep getting bigger, so. Keep getting your baits out there, man. The reason why I like 
to catch buttons. I mean, they're a beautiful fish. The, those colors um, just come alive um, on that seagrass. Um, and I mean, not only are the colors, you know, amazing, the, the fight um, to them is really darn good too. Um, they peel drag, I mean, and they're great eating. Um, you know, you can take some home and have a good table fare. Let him ride. The fight of a mutton snapper is incredible regardless of where you're catching them. But you throw them in the middle of this heavy current and these little finger channels, and once they realize that there's a problem, they're gonna do everything they can to get away. And if they can get into that current and try to ride that, put their bodies to the side of it and use that wide tail uh, to give some power and get away from that pressure, Man, they, the fight was incredible. If I could figure out how to do that at home, I'd be dialed right in. And you can feel it in that leader, that them digging down, that leader yeah. comes back all shaded up. You know, from rubbing on that grass. That's right. Not, I hooked this one right under the, like right in the chest. Give him a different movement. Yep. Yeah, that's what I was. I was gonna do that right now with the jig head. Try it one time on the chest with the jig head. Make him dig down side. a little bit. Not bad, not bad. The coolest thing for me is one of the things that Nestor pointed out was kind of the burnt edge on its tail. Yeah, I mean, the, the colors on these Nestor are incredible. I mean, that tail. Yeah. Have you ever noticed, Jay, the, on the tail, the little burn tips? If you look at the tail, right at the end, it has, it looks, it's all, it's a black tip, but it looks burnt. If you look at the jaw structure, See those canines? Yeah. It's like a mangrove and a cubera mixed in there. I know one thing for sure. I would not put my fingers in that. <laughs> <laughs> they, they lock down on you. You're in trouble. Yep. Give you a good little chomp yeah, there. Yeah, man. So, Jay, we're taking this one back home? Yeah, let's do that. As far as a fishery goes, Miami, Key Biscayne pretty much has it all. I mean, from the inshore stuff, what we were doing, and of course, you know, on our way out, we saw pods of tarpon. Uh, I mean, it's just from permit bonefish, tarpon, mutton snapper on the inshore stuff to the guys that are sail fishing right there close to the Gulf Stream. You're never far from the big city. I mean, you see all that skyline and knowing what lies in the water right there close to Miami is incredible. That'd be a good one, Jay. A good one? Tell me, Jay. Oh my God. <laughs> Allow me to assist you. That's the one we want right there. Oh, that is what we're after right there. For a couple feet of water? Not too bad, not too bad. And it has picked up a little bit. Yeah, the one's picked up, but. They don't seem to mind, right? They're chewing, right? God, that's a freaking tank. It's a nice one, man. I mean, what do you think? that dinner worthy? I think that's gonna get invited back to Port Charlotte. Now, now you know I'm gonna have to fight two camera guys for this. <laughs> I can't tell you how happy I am to be able to pull this shoot off. You know, being able to get ahead of that front, catch the fish, get back to the dock, and see that front pulling in over top of Miami. I mean, talk about a close, close window. But, you know, it's, it's an incredible fishery. I can't wait to get down there and do it again. Had a great time.